What state of mind were you in when Jesus found you? Some people have come from all walks of life. They come from addiction. They come from domestic violence. They come from all types of things, drugs, prostitution. Where were you, hallelujah, when Jesus found you? talk today glory to God about Jesus hallelujah and we all probably can talk about Jesus but really understanding who Jesus is really understanding the things that Jesus has done back then and what he's doing right now for us glory to God and so as we go on to our first um, slide our topic today I was looking at it and I was just saying you know Lord when I got through reading this I said you know we got to say it we got to run and tell it. Glory to God. We got to use our voice. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go ahead and read the, the scriptures and give you a feel of what I'm talking about. But today I'm praying and encouraging you to tell what tell somebody what God has done for you. Glory to God. Amen. Help somebody understand who Jesus is. Amen. Because we Amen. want to get all excited and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is still King of Kings. Glory Amen. to God. He's still on the throne. Hallelujah. And he's still working miracles. Amen. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. And so I'm going to use our from our key verse today is Mark 5 and 19. And it uh, states... And they came to Jesus and they see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Excuse me. That's the 15th verse. The 16th verse says, and they that saw it told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Now, here is our key scripture. Mark 5 and 19. How be it? Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and had compassion on thee. Jesus said, go home, glory to God, Come on. and tell your friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done unto thee. And I believe as I was reading that scripture, and I was pondering in my soul, and I began to say, God, you worked a miracle. Amen. Because this man had been known to be possessed with devils. Yes. This man had been known to live up in the mountains and, and away from communities because he was uh, demonic. You know, demonic strongholds was all over his life. But when Jesus came on the scene, glory to God. They, 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 if you you got to read the whole chapter of Mark, the fifth, start at the first uh, verse uh, and the fifth chapter to really begin to understand the story about how when they came upon Jesus, they said, Lord Jesus, what have we to do with you? Jesus was minding his own business, but they knew who Jesus was because he's the king of kings. 
He's the Lord of Lords, uh huh. And so they knew who Jesus was, and and they said, "What have we to do with you, Jesus?" And Jesus began to cast them out. I'm just kind of paraphrasing the story, and and he cast them out to where the man, Hallelujah, like the Scripture says, back up in the uh, uh, 15th verse, that when people saw him. He was sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. What y'all afraid of? <laughs> they were afraid. Why are you afraid? Because a man that was once bound is now free. But that's just like the enemy. He'll try to twist things up and, and scare folks when they see things that are people are being delivered or people are being blessed. You know that that type of uh, thing you say where it seems like as soon as you try to make it to the top of the bucket, there's a crab that pulls you back down because nobody wants you to be free. Uh -huh. We got to be careful of that mentality that we're afraid that somebody else um, is going to be blessed more than me or somebody else is getting a blessing and I'm not getting mine. You know, those jealousy spirits. Let me just say it like that. We have to be careful because why are you afraid when your brother and sister are being blessed? Why were they afraid? Jesus had healed the man. And the man was so grateful, saints of God, that he was so grateful that he went and, and found Jesus again and said, Lord, can I go with you? Can I walk with you? And Jesus was like, no, no, you go home and tell your friends what I've done. Go home and tell them how you've been delivered and set free. And I believe that in 2021, God is saying unto us, go tell your friends what I've done for you. Tell them about those addictions that I set you free from. Tell them about how I healed your body. Oh. Tell them how I gave you peace of mind. Go tell it, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to get passionate about our walk with God. We got to get passionate about what that we mean business for Jesus. Oh. Jesus needs some women and some men that will go tell, hallelujah, what he's done for you. Glory to God. And so Jesus is uh, telling the man. Tell them how I had compassion on you. And when we can begin to look back over our lives and we begin to look back where Jesus has brought us from, we know it was nothing but love and compassion. Hallelujah. When Jesus found us and he delivered us and he set us free, where were you doing, hallelujah, when Jesus found you? Glory to God. What state of mind were you in when Jesus found you? Some people have come from all walks of life. They come from addiction. They come from domestic violence. They come from all types of things, drugs, prostitution. Where were you, hallelujah, when Jesus found you? You got to get excited again. Glory to God. And you got to begin to tell people that had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Man. where would I be? Glory Come to God. On. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's Come right. on, you got to testify. Yes. You got to tell people where you've come from. You got to just say it, glory to God. You have to say it and you got to say it until you believe it, glory to God. Man. And then you got to say it until you convince the other person that they need Jesus, glory to God. We got to use our voices. And I begin to say, Lord, how do we use our voice? Glory to God. We just open up our mouth and say it. And so I was looking at the, the uh, Meridian Dictionary, and it had more than three ways to describe or tell you how to use your voice. The noun definition and the transitive, the transitive verb definition. So I chose the noun part B. When it says voice, it says a choice or opinion openly or formally express. The voice of the people. And I believe that's what Jesus wanted me to say today. We as a people, we have to use our voice. There is there is unity, glory to God, when we come together and things will start happening because we are using our voices, glory to God. It's something about when you come together and you begin to speak those things that God has done for you. And so I had a little slide up there that just says, say it. I just wanted to want you to get it visually. Just say it. It doesn't matter. Just say what God has done for you. No, you don't have to be a person that 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 just got to, you know, beat it in somebody's head. But if you say it and keep living the life, eventually that person will come around. Just like me and my husband, we, we touch and agree. He gives out uh, the, the church ministry cards when he's out and about in the stores and what have you. And, you know, sometimes we wonder, Lord, where are all those people that we've, we've witnessed to and given cards to? But I, at the same time, I said, babe, all we got to do is pray that God would just water the seeds that we've, that we've sown. Water the seeds, oh God, because wherever they're at, we pray that God will get a hold of them. Amen. But we got to keep saying it, saints. We got to say it. We got to say that Jesus is Lord. We got to say that Jesus will Man. save you. We got to say that 
Jesus will deliver you. Amen. We got to say that Jesus is oh, in your broken heart. Yes, we got to say that there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. But you got to believe it first. Hallelujah. Amen. Because nobody wants your God if you're sitting around moaning and, and groping. Nobody wants your God if you're sitting around and you can't pay your light bill. You got to show them that God will take care of his yes, own. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to be convinced. So you yes, have to Lord. say it. And so Hallelujah. we have to use our voice, glory to God. And sometimes we do find ourselves battling within ourselves. Lord, we are, sometimes we wonder, Lord, where are you? You told me if I speak to the mountain, it would be moved. But, but in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our tribulations at times, it seems like it's too hard to open up our mouths to really speak to those things. But saints, we got to say it. We got to rebuke the devil at all times. We got to know who we are yes, in Lord. God. So we must say it. We must talk about Jesus. We must tell people about the goodness of Jesus. Because if that's the fa uh, problem, then why are we here then? Come on. Why are we here if we can't talk about God? Hallelujah. What, what are we doing every Sunday? And, and our sisters and our neighbors are dying around us. You know, saints, we got to talk about God. And so I, I got so encouraged. When I was um, uh, doing this George, the George Floyd uh, trial, but remember when they was first marching, and uh, I saw this little girl, and this little girl uses her her uh, make it big on the screen, uh, please. This little girl, she uses her voice and her demeanor says something. <laughs> I was just so, I was so blessed by this picture, saints. Amen. Because I said, look at little mama right here. She was out there saying, no justice, no peace. Yes, no, no justice, justice no, no peace. peace. And I was in the state, God, if the little one can get out there and march and say, no, no justice, justice, no, no peace, peace, then truly we can get out there and say, Jesus Amen. still saves. Amen. We truly we can say that no Jesus, no peace. All right. All no right. Jesus, no, no peace. peace. Glory to God. No, no Jesus, peace. No, no peace. But we know, hallelujah, yes. that once Jesus come in, a new life begins. Glory to God. And we have peace. Glory to God. We have joy. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got it all. Hallelujah. When we have Jesus in our lives. And so I looked at this little girl and I was like, my God. I said, Lord, this is going to take her places in life because she's standing for something. And how many know when we stand for something, glory to God, when we stand for something, something has to break. That's right. Something has to give. Amen. All over the world, just this little girl touched so many people. And I'm talking, it goes beyond the color. That's it right. went over to our Caucasian sisters and brothers. Yeah. It went over to our Asian sisters and brothers and said, wait, we got a problem here in America. <laughs> if little mama can get up there and yeah. march, little mama's upset, glory to God. And she's out there doing something about it. Surely we as God's people, hallelujah, can open up our mouths and say something about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Truly we can open up our mouths and tell somebody I've been saved, hallelujah, because the Lord Jesus came into my life. I was a rich undone, glory to God. But when I said yes to Jesus, hallelujah, my Lord, he began to order my steps. My life began to line up. Why? Because I serve a God who is alive and well. Glory to God. Amen. So we got to testify, saints. Revelations 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. But let's just deal with the earlier clause. He said, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You want to overcome some things, start testifying. That's right. See, because sometimes you can be sitting down in the valley, but when you start thinking of the goodness of Jesus, when you start thinking of the woulda, coulda, shoulda's where you could have been if it had not been for Jesus, trust me, just talking about him has a way of stirring up something in you. It'll cause you to rise up. Hallelujah. I heard David said, why is my soul cast down within me? He said, I will yet praise the Lord for he is good. I will yet give God some praise for he kept me from a uh, Saul when Saul tried to kill him 21 times glory to God and David found himself depressed he found himself going through some things and, and he got quiet for a moment but then he had to encourage himself and he said why is my soul cast down within yes, me Lord. why is my countenance looking pitiful when I know my God and I know what 
he's able to do. I know what he's capable of. Glory to God. And so we got to start testifying. You start feeling good when you start talking about God. Just like your child. When your child has been uh, being on the honor roll at school. And that they're getting uh, straight A's. Hallelujah. You want to brag about your child. You want to tell everybody, oh, my child is getting straight A. Oh, my child was offered this scholarship and this scholarship. You want to brag about it. And you start feeling good, glory to God. And that's what Jesus wants us to do, saying He wants us to brag about it. But we got to get it so in us like the man who got delivered, where he went and found Jesus and said, Lord, can I stay with you? Glory to God. Because he was so grateful that Jesus had delivered him. Can you imagine being being possessed and demonically, you know, uh, possessed by demons and you have no control over it? My God, my God. And we may not be to that extent, saints, but we know there's some things inside of us that we need God to control. We need God to help us with glory to God. And when God gives you that breakthrough, hallelujah, you know, hallelujah, you can't, you have to give God praise. You must praise God. Why? Because it's nobody but the Lord, hallelujah, that delivered you from you. Hmm. Delivered you from you. Come on, talk about it. We got to get excited again. Amen. We got to want to be in God's presence. That's what the man did. He said, Lord, can I stay with you? But Jesus said, no, you go home and tell your friends. Come on. Go home and tell your friends. When's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When is the last time you hit a share button on your Facebook and say, I want you to attend church with me this morning? When's the last time you talk to your children about Jesus? When's the last time you talk to your uncles and your aunties about Jesus? I know sometimes they don't want to hear it because family can be a trip. Jesus said that we're with, he's without honor in his own country. Glory to God. But that's okay. As long as you plant the seed, God will do the watering. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So as I come to my close today, hallelujah, I just want to encourage you all to testify. I want to encourage you guys to, to understand that your testimony means something. You know how when you go into court and you got to stand before the judge, you're not saying nothing until you swear, right? On that Bible, hallelujah, that you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. And then they allow you to start testifying. And so that's what, now that Jesus has come in, that's, that's, that's your sworn testimony. Jesus is in my life. Now I can testify. What you testifying about? People say, I got a testimony. But if you take off the money, it's a test. Come on. Because at first times, you got to go through some things. So when you overcome your test, then you have a testimony. Money. Glory That's to right. God. Right. So what are your tests? What are your tests? You know what your tests have been. What have you able to come over that you can testify about? Come on. Years ago, we would have what we call testimony service. And people couldn't wait to testify what God has done for them. But then as testimony service would go on, some people just wanted to talk. And they'll just start talking about thanking God and, and giving God the glory. They'll say, okay, you're just being grateful. But what is your test? Where's the testimony? Where's the test that you were tried on every side, but yet you came out? Come Glory on. to God. Where's on. the test that you were with some friends and they were all smoking weed, but you said, God, give me the strength not to. Hallelujah. Where's Hallelujah. the test? Come on, preach it. Hallelujah. I passed by the liquor store and I wanted to go in and get that crown, whatever you drink, that Hennessy, whatever you drink, but you were able to keep walking by it. That's the test. Hallelujah. Come on. You overcame it. He gave you strength to overcome it. Yes, Lord. You're not slipping and dipping no more. That's the test. Come on, help yourself. Come Johnny on. called you last night for yes. a quick run. Whatever they call it. I don't know what they call them now. Booty <laughs> calls, whatever. I don't know. But you said, no, I'm not even going to answer the phone. I'm just going to hit the red. Delete. Hello. Go to voicemail. Come on. Why? Put because God has given you the strength to overcome hey, your test. Put your weight on. You're passing on. your test now. Yes, Lord. You're Come going on. through some things, but you're passing your test. So let's take a look at some people in the Bible who was going, who was being tested. Look at the children of Israel, and God told them, "I'm going to give you the land, but the wall of Jericho has to come down." And the only way the wall of Jericho was going to come down, they had to march around it seven times. And on that seventh time, Jesus said, I want you to open up your mouth and scream and praise me as loud as you can. 
And when the people did that, guess what? The walls came tumbling down. Look at the woman who was out the well, glory to God, when she said, come see a man who told me everything that I needed to know. Come see a man, glory to God, because she was excited. She was ecstatic that God had delivered her from the five men that were not her husband, glory to God. Look at David. David said, I got another testimony. He said, he brought me up out of a miry clay and he set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. Glory to God. Testifying. The blind man said, all I know is that I was once blind, but now I see. Glory to God. They came and asked him, who, how, how do you see? He said, a man named Jesus. Glory to God. He just spoke it into existence and now I can see. Hannah said, he will open up your womb. Y'all know the story about Hannah. Hannah couldn't have no kids. God blessed her with one child by the name of Samuel. But he didn't stop there. He said, because you've been faithful, I'm going to show and prove to the world that if you call on me, I will answer. And not only did she have one child, but she had a total of six children. But she had to go through some things. See, that's the test. Hallelujah. Are you going to give up on God? Or are you going to keep pushing through regardless of what comes your way? Because you want to make a testimony. That's See, right. we got to get to a point in life where we have what we call a point of references. Uh huh. We got to have a paper, a stroll or a roll that says, wait a minute, back in 2001, God delivered me from this. Back in 2004, God delivered me from this. Come on, saints. We got to have a testimony. That's Glory right. to God. Or what God is able to do. And let's not forget about Lazarus because something seems impossible. I don't know about you, but I know I have something on my plate that I'm believing God for. And Lazarus was dead for three days. Come on. Jesus showed up on the scene, told them, don't worry. I got this. Mary told Jesus, if you had been here three days ago, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus called Lazarus for and he lived. Amen. Miracles. Jesus still works miracles. Amen. Saints. The man that had been crippled for many years. Here you go. By any means necessary. Watch out. This was his test. Put your weight on it. How you going to get healed? Put your weight on it. There it is. He called his friends. There it is. I need y'all to carry me to over where Jesus is. I heard Jesus was over at, I believe it was either Zachariah's house or Nicodemus' house. He said, take me to Nicodemus' house. Yeah. And the crowd, there were so many people they didn't get get through. Guess what the man did? <laughs> he said, let's take the roof off the house. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Come on. Work it out. Woo! He said, let's take the roof. That ain't your house, though, man. I don't care. Jesus is there. Take the roof off. Work and do out. you not Come know on. they took the roof off the house? Yes. And they lowered that man in. And Jesus was like, whoa. Woo-hoo. I ain't seen this kind of faith in years. (laughs) He said, man, take up your bed and walk. Glory to God. Can you imagine the faith that that man had? That should encourage you. See, the Bible is written for our instructions and our learning and our teaching, saints of God. And if God did it then, he'll do it now. So I know we can start playing with that scripture and say, wait a minute. Ain't nobody coming over here taking my roof off. We know how much roof costs, right, in the reality of $10,000. It may be cheaper. You ain't taking my roof off. But you did not care. I believe that when that man got healed, I believe he got some workers and restored that man's roof. Because I believe that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Addeth no sorrow. Glory to God. If you win, I'm going to win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If I come over there and you need some help at your house, I'm going to help you at your house. Why? Because I need you to win so I can win. Glory to God. And so we thank God for just the faith of those. And I can go on and on of people in the Bible who have faith, who believe God. The last one was Abraham who staggered not at the promises of God. But he believed God that God was able to do what he had promised. Glory to God. And so it goes back to this, saints. Are you willing to testify? Are you ready to say it? When you get off today, who will you go tell? Who will you tell about Jesus? Who will you tell about the goodness of God? Just think back over your life, all the way back from 12 years old, all the way up to where you're at now. And see where God has brought you from. See how God has been there for you. Somebody said he's a lawyer in the courtroom. All right. Uh-huh. All right. Somebody said he's a doctor in the sick room. All right. Come on now. Somebody said that he'll give you water yes. when you're thirsty. All glory right. to God. Yes, he will. Somebody said he's a friend to the friendless. Come hey, on. glory to God. That 
that's the type of God we serve. That's he right. wants you to know that he's here for you. Now, will you be there for him? Come on. Glory to God. There's a people that is still waiting on you to tell your testimony. Come on. For you to witness to them. You saw the scripture we opened up with this morning. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching. Glory to God. It's up to us, saints. It's up to us. Are you going to allow God to use you this morning? I know, hallelujah. You probably saying, sister, I'm trying to get myself together. That's our problem. If we could get ourselves together, we would be a long ways than where we are now, right? Amen. All you got to do is do what Jesus tells you to do, regardless of what state you're in right now. And all you have to do is tell somebody that Jesus loves you. Amen. With this pandemic that has... Uh, hit America, the whole world, revival is coming back to the church. Amen. And we got to be ready to receive those who do not know Jesus. But we also got to be telling people about Jesus. That's right. Because people are in their houses scared to death. People are uh, lonely and hurting and wondering what's going on. And they don't understand that this is the same God that sends pestilence and famines back in the day. He's allowing this to take place today. Come on. But we don't have to be scared or be fretful because we are the king's kid. Amen. He said we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Show forth his praises that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. I pray that someone has been blessed by the word of God. I pray that you've been encouraged to know that you are a soldier and that you can march in God's army. Amen. That God has given you all the armor that you need, glory to God, to witness to that helpless soul, to witness to that lonely soul. Keep in mind, people are smiling, but they're, they're tore up on the inside. inside. Yes. Keep in mind that that very best friend of yours is hurting, but because you know them, you don't take it serious. Oh, they'll be all right. They just going, no, people need to know that Jesus can heal their broken heart, that Jesus can calm all their fears. They need to know saints. So with that being said, let's just ask God to give us the boldness to witness the boldness to declare his glory when we're out and about amongst friends, families, and co-workers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to repeat this simple little prayer with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say this with me. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he died for your sins. Yes. Yeah. And that God raised him from the dead. Yes. According to Romans chapter 10 verse 9. If you believe that. Mm -hmm. That if thou shalt believe in thine heart. Yes. And confess with thy mouth. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be saved. Shall be saved. That's you. Yes. Somebody repeat this with me. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus died for me. Up on the cross. Up on the cross. That he died for my sins. That he died for my sins. And so I repent today. So I repent today. I invite him into my heart. I invite him into my heart. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. I am saved. I am saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen right there. Amen. Because Hallelujah. if you believe that simple little prayer, yes. then God has something that he can work with. And yes. go to our website, savedandserving.org. And go to the bottom of the home page, click on the salvation video. And once you get there, click the submit feedback button and let us know I got saved. Amen. Fill out the form. We want to rock with you. Amen. Amen. We want to walk with you in the spirit. We want to be your ride or die. I want to be your pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So go ahead and come on in and come on in and come on in. Click and sign up as a virtual member. We want to be available to you. We want to send you new member orientation handbook and information. We want to send you a t-shirt. Hallelujah. 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 Because there's something about having a multitude of godly counsel in your life. Yeah. That's how we got to where we are. Somebody had to counsel with us.